minutes of the October 26th meeting. Second. Any, no uh, comments I wasn't even there. No, that's <laughs> what I said. No comments. I did read it. I didn't have any. <clears throat> So all in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. 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 <coughs> Next, a uh, request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park on December 3rd for the annual tree lighting. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, supported by the rec department and the yeah. yeah, everything's in place. All fees have been uh, requested. Um, concurrence from the academy. Uh, fees are waived. Everything's all set yeah. to go. Yeah, sure. Yep. Next, a contract for laboratory services for the wastewater treatment plant to contest analytical in the amount of $8,500. This is our annual contract with the uh, for the wastewater treatment plant for work that we can't do in our little laboratory down there. Uh, last year's cost was uh, $6,360, so it's gone up a bit for the services. What are they doing? Um, let me pull that out for you. Nitrogen. Yeah. Oh, Very good. Nitrogen, analysis. total nitrate, uh, oh, okay. well, nitrate, uh, metals, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's the equipment that we have. Yeah. And we're, well, we, we want to do it. Yes, of course. required to do it. I would recommend the board approve it, yes. Yeah. Uh, all right, all in favor of approving the contract? Aye. Right. We, we like permit compliance. <coughs> yeah. Next, we have actually three uh, that we can group together. Um, We've got three streets that are asking to become um, be accepted as the public streets. Musanti, a portion of Musanti Drive, Olimbeer Drive, and Moser Street. I'll make a motion to approve for purposes of discussion. Second. So we've been working with Mass Development, who has created this network of roads up there, and one of the issues that have come up is that they're under a very tight time frame to get the street accepted prior to winter conditions. They don't want to plow again this year. Uh, we received plans and documents yesterday to finalize it. We didn't get fully through our review at this point. Um, also, we haven't been able to get out to the field to uh, look at the monumentation in the ground for the, the layout of the roadway. That's something we also do. So uh, we believe we can do it in the relatively near future. So it will be the choice of the board whether or not to get the work completely done in advance to the satisfaction of the staff or to put conditions on the street acceptance going forward or the uh, recommendation of street acceptance going forward. And that way, as it's done over the next few weeks, staff can weigh in the final uh, output of it and uh, it still needs to go through the planning board for recommendation. Then it needs to go to city council for two readings. Sure. Uh, would you be comfortable with setting conditions for them and approving it here? I know that we'll resolve it in the next two weeks or so, but it's a matter of the, whether the board wants to make this a, a conditional uh, recommendation or not. Uh, in the past, haven't we actually gone out to the streets? We have. Is that, you don't recommend that this yeah. time? No, no, we had the, we we've had the, already had the we've already had the public hearings. Oh, we have? The yes. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. like way back. Yeah. Right. We had, we had two of them, at least. Right. I didn't remember the third one. But Isn't the Musani back of, the, the big one? The Musani is in the back of Haskell Building off of Prince Street. Borders the community gardens. That's so Musani Drive. Is that the one that comes into the, light, the traffic light intersection? No, that's Village Hill Road. Oh. Well, that one's approved. Right? That one's already been approved. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the one I remember. I Mom, remember. I, excuse me, just the time bomb prepare these? Uh, it was a combination of Ty and Bond and Gale Associates. Well, then I, I need to introduce myself in this discussion. Thank you. Uh, I would think that, that we could set conditions and, and give us tentative approval upon completion. And I'll make a motion to that. Second. So, I'll, uh, so we're just voting on... Do we need to have a it's separate vote on... Well, it's, a, it's a recommendation you're making to the city council for street acceptance. Mm -hmm. And it'd be conditioned that uh, staff receives uh, all information requested and reviewed and approved. So and, I, yeah. I mean, we, we, we saw plans yesterday afternoon. 
He's and, not going to go yeah. before city council right. and say yes unless he's satisfied. And essentially, you're certifying that they've met all of the requirements that were set out for them by the planning department. And the subdivision and, rules and regulations. And that the work meets your satisfaction. That's correct. Our city standards. Quality construction. Okay. And where does the stormwater go? There's a number of locations it goes. There's a series of uh, stormwater management areas. Some are infiltration systems. Uh, some are detention areas before going into the Mill River. Those are the ownership of the Homeowners Association of the North Campus. And do they have the new requirement that they do an annual inspection? And yes, they do. Submit a report? Yep. That's recorded with the Registry of Deeds. Right. And that's the Planning Department? That is the Department of Public Works. <coughs> oh, we do? We issue the stormwater permits. Oh, all right. Two or three years ago, it was adopted. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, so we're voting to um, recommend that these streets be accepted uh, pending review and approval by the staff. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. <coughs> Set a uh, date for claims committee meeting uh, for 754 Bridge Road. This is Mr. Susco's sewer backup claim from 2008. So well, everything's been pulled together? Uh, he still has some things in his claim that are to be determined, but he has a claim of about um, $8,600. Uh, so the, he would like an audience before the claims committee to discuss yeah. his I issue. Think that's fine. Yep. And he'll need a half an hour. Staff won't be here. Staff has a half day that day. Okay. Uh, the 14th is our next meeting. But the following Wednesday is actually in November. There's a five. There's five Wednesdays in November. If you wanted the world 23rd to the 30th. 29th? March the 30th. 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 Oh, 30th. 30th. And then in December, we would have a meeting normally on the 14th. What I don't know is what's going to happen in the next two weeks and what outstanding contracts that might have to be acted upon yet mm -hmm. at this point, if any, or any other issues. If that happens, can we uh, call an emergency meeting for Tuesday instead of Wednesday? We can. We just don't want to schedule yeah. um, a claims committee meeting if we're not going right. yeah. to have a... Yeah. Well, so do you want to change it to the 30th? Yeah, we'll just yeah. no, okay. meeting. I'm just yeah. scheduling a meeting for the 30th anyway. Yeah, and then it's and then it's uh, two because of the way the weeks fall. It's still then two weeks to the following meeting. Right, yeah. right. then it is. So we can only have one meeting in December because one it's the exactly. holiday fall. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, so we really do that. I like your yeah. thinking. Be the twenty eighth. Yeah. yeah. All right. So so we in case we agree, we'll go for the thirtieth for a second meeting this month. Yeah. And then the claims committee can yeah. come that day. And do you want it from five to five thirty, or do you want it some? A little earlier than that. Probably should be 445. 5:15. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Like that. Okay. Because we we've, we've gone over it seems like consistently every time. All right. So you want it 4:45? Yes. The 5:15. Is that what you're looking at? <laughs> I have it uh, kind of deactivated for the meeting. I didn't think of that. <laughs> but he didn't ask for permission. Mm. Mm. Okay, great. Right. So, Uh, next, uh, we're going to uh, review Amendment Number One of Contract Two Hundred Five Ten for Landfill Odor Response Services to Environmental Compliance Services. Uh, basically, we're extending the current contract for an additional two years. 
maximum or global for purposes of discussion? Second that. We have a contract with uh, Environmental Compliance Services for order response um, services. We had signed the contract back in February of 2010. We need to extend the contract out um, through Fe February of 2013. The value of the original value of the contract was $88,000. Um, to date, we've expended $20,100. So we've got quite a bit of money left in the contract, but the contract term was only one year. So the purpose of the amendment is to extend um, the contract term by two years. I've had a discussion with ECS. They've agreed to keep their um, prices the same as they were in 2010 as the original contract. So um, this is basically uh, an amendment to extend uh, the term of the contract. Uh, and how much have we had to use it in the last year? Well, we've used $20,100 in the past year and 10 months, um, I didn't figure out how much we've used in the last year. Oh, no, that's fine. I'm so just like saying. So, like 50 responses you gave? Well, since January, we've had 37 responses. Oh, interesting. Okay. I wonder if that was that much. How many positive? Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, that's 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 been the term of the contract. It's been 37 responses for, a year for and the half. term of the contract. Oh. Since this year, 2011, we've had one, two, Six, including yeah. And how many of those were positive? Since the beginning of the no, contract, no. or this, this year? year? This year. How did the eleven? I'm really glad I brought this spreadsheet because I wasn't going to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, res two responses were confirmed. You know, it, it would, it, if I may, hmm. yeah, it would seem to me that uh, uh, that we ought to be talking to DEP about extending this contract. Every dollar that we spend is money that we're taking away from the programs that we want to institute. And, and you know, I'd, I'd leave it to you to uh, comment on that because, you know, there's a lot of them. Well, and, and I remember when we did this renewal a year and a half ago, we talked about talking with DEP about what, is this like going to go on forever? And well, there was a conversation with DEP about Yes, it will go on forever. But they were, is so what I remember. During the life of the landfill, it will go on. Otherwise, they will fine us. Yeah. For, if we have odors, they will fine us. So this is our response for an odor management program, an odor program, so we won't get fined. Yeah. And I suppose at this point, they're looking at maybe a year or so left, thinking. It's about what we have left, about a year capacity. I think when we signed this contract, we had a kind of a lengthy discussion about whether uh, working with ECS or another environmental engineering firm would be the best way to do it, and whether we could train staff, get equipment, do things in a different way. And we we said we would monitor the amount of expenditure on this particular task to figure out if what we were doing made sense financially. And I think the fact that we've only had um, six calls in 2011, you know, the the, the response. Six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars a call. The response, uh, it's $500 for a response Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and if it's an off hours or weekends or holiday response, it's $600 per response. So so the expenditures are not great um, by doing it this way. So, you know, it, it would seem to make sense to kind of stay the course until the landfill closes and, and then just be done with it. I think the DEP was really hesitant um, to let the city not do this program anymore. Other <coughs> landfills in the region have have the same program in place, so I, I don't think that they're going to want to let us not do it and then have other facilities raise the same question. Right. And at the time, we considered whether to have a staff person do it, and clearly this last year we made the right decision because the staff per person would not have been um, worth the effort and time. So. It's hard for us to do it because of the, you know, it's a 24-7 it's a <coughs> response, so you know, this firm provides multiple people that are available on the weekends. They don't have someone chained to their phone. You know, they've got a variety of people they can assign. So if we were to do it, it, it makes it, it would make it more complicated because we'd need to train multiple people and have them available on call, so. Well, is it worth just having the discussion with DEP or touch and base with them? And to say until, you know, you're taking money away from the program. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to make a call and have a discussion with them. With them. Talk about it. I was just going to say that it seems like it's dropped off so much in the last year, and we've got, what, another year, year and a half that we're going to be monitoring this. It's, I, I would vote in support of 
sending the contract. So just stay in the course. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion on the table? Yeah. We do. Well, the motion is to extend the contract. Mm -hmm. So a yes vote would be to extend the contract. So All, questions? All, questions? All in favor of extending the contract? All right. Aye. Is anyone opposed? One opposed. Jim. Jim? Yeah. You're opposed? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jim, thank you for being that spreadsheet. Yes. Next is a discussion of temporary easements on Kennedy Road uh, for the Roberts Meadowbrook Bridge replacement. Need approval? Second. So I have a plan up here on the wall. It's probably hard for you to see, but this is uh, Kennedy Road here. This is Chesterfield Road, Sylvester Road. Matthews, he's going to be replacing this bridge and putting it out to bid. The reason why this is coming here is you as water commissioners, who are in the hats as water commissioners, is your property. It's watershed land. So you need to give grant the uh, right of entry and the approval of the easements. So this is uh, preliminary work that's being done up front for the project. Uh, basically, it's a sign off by Terry and myself, but we need board approval on it. I make a motion that we approve the easements uh, as laid out by the uh, engineering department? There's a total of three. There's one here for 76 square feet, there's one here for 681 square feet, and one here for 335 square feet. They're pretty small areas, and they're all construction related. They disappear after construction? They do. So we're basically a, a, a yes vote is to grant the easements. Uh, one year extension for potassium <coughs> permanganate uh, permanganate uh, to for the wastewater treatment plant to Marubeni Specialty Chemicals. Marubeni, yeah, Marubeni Specialty Chemicals. Oh, there is one. Oh. Uh, extension would run until January third, two thousand thirteen. Move we'll approval. Second. Yes. Uh, is this a a USA product or a foreign product, and has it gone through the specs? It's gone through the specs. I couldn't tell you offhand whether it's a US made or foreign made. You remember, we we ran into a lot of trouble with the foreign made products. We didn't have problems with it the past year. We're using this product. Same one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Same. It's just a year extension. It's two dollars and eight cents a pound. And last year we went through about sixty-two thousand four hundred dollars last year. Contract for design of pavement condition. Contract for the design of a pavement condition survey to VHB in the amount of nine thousand one hundred and fifty. This is our annual contract for pavement management. They go out each year and survey twenty five percent of the roadways for decessed cracking and other deficiencies, so that we can keep our pavement management program and updated for selection of the streets to be paved. We've been doing this for if not 11, 12 years now with VHP. Last year's cost was $8,900 or so, so the price went up a little bit. We're totally satisfied with the information. Absolutely. Okay. And we end up with a prioritized list of where we should be putting our paving. We do, okay. depending on our budget. At least we know where to start. We do know where to start. <laughs> we never know where to, where to stop. <laughs> we, we do. $24 million later, we could stop. <laughs> uh, all right. All in favor of approving the contract. Aye. 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 Great. Uh, next, solid waste update. Actually, uh, well, Rose kind of chaired the committee. But we had a good meeting this morning of the Solid Waste Action Committee, uh, the Solid Waste Committee worked largely on the toy exchange that's happening in December uh, over at Smith Road. December 10th. Uh, also had uh, uh, some discussion about our dream proposal for a, uh, if we had all the money in the world and all the land possibilities in the world, what a, a reuse facility would look like. Uh, the committee is moving forward in terms of trying to figure out where we are with the mass DOT land next door. Um, and 
Oh, we talked about the $10,000 grant that we received for the reuse next the reuse for, um, activities for next year. To yeah. have a, the grant was written so that we could have another event similar to the one that we had in September that was sort of a swap event. And to formalize that procedure, that was sort of a first go around. My interpretation is it's sort of a first run through. And now uh, we can start formalizing these events that are swap events and it's uh, called a swap them, swap out, swap out. Uh, I don't ever remember the lingo. This is the one across the street? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, but it's the idea you, you can pick up or take away mm -hmm. or not, or drop things off. But it's becoming a little more formal. We, the $10,000 is going to allow for ro uh, roll-offs, t-shirts, um, signage, staff, uh, <laughs> some staff, yeah. So that's a, it's a good thing because now we set a precedent for this. And we're going to have to pay for these. Yeah. I'm pleased to report also that the committee is slowing with some new volunteers that have started to come on board. And the other thing, we had a quick little discussion uh, about the toy exchange and the cost of, since we're going to be using Smith Folk, that there's a, a fee for the custodian um, and that seemed to be getting in the way of planning the event, whether or not we should uh, charge a fee for this new pilot thing that we're trying to do. And I just wanted to share that, that it seems like when we're doing something new like this, that I would hope that we'd be able to find money in our existing budget to be able to cover a cost like that. So we're not adding a complication of fee structure on yeah, top of the... Bucks, 150 uh, bucks? We're talking 300 bucks. maybe. 300. If, if, we, if the day before yeah. they accept the toys, the Smith oh, right. requires that a, a custodian yeah. be present. So it's three to five hours, definitely on Saturday, Friday, three hours if that's... Mm -hmm. a, if we accept the toys between seven and nine. So, um, thirty dollars an hour, so I don't want to speak for the director, but I can't imagine three hundred bucks is gonna be a substantial hurdle to hold in this event. Thank you. Yeah. Thank that's you. What we wanted that's to all hear. that's all. I mean it was just one of those things. There was a discussion about it being a fee based event, but our feeling uh, our feeling was that since it's the first time doing an event and we want the community is, has been asking for it, the, the solid waste um, task force is asking for it, this is sort of the second one, this is formal, we have skewed, uh, we have, oh, this, this is, is the, the second first. one, the first time, well, it was yeah. another, another, um, some other people did it uh, at, in, at Williston, but the idea that we support it, and since it is the first time, that we not charge, charge a fee for it, and then if it becomes popular and we find out that it is well received, then charging a nominal fee to, to uh, encourage access to pay, to pay for it, like the composting right. uh, project, then it would make sense. I, you know, part of what we talked about the task force last year was making sure that we had some kind of an enterprise fund moving forward so we have money for this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the thought was that we should be able to put these on for people. The community's asking for us right. to do it. Yeah. Before we have budgets, though, I'd like to I'd like to see these first time um, uh, uh, pilot events, essentially, where we get we knock out some of the the, uh, the chaos. The, the September <laughs> event for reuse had some had some issues in it, so we do it the first time. We knock out some of the issues. Uh, you know, I don't want to speak for um, the administration, but that's sort of our thought. It's a great time. I, I think we've been saying, coming up to the landfill closure, it's the time we want to be implementing all these things right. to see how yeah. possible they are, to see how much they cost, to see how we could do them in the exactly. future. Exactly. Because at least we have the ability to pay some of these yeah. incidental costs to make these things work right, right. now. And we got several, several volunteers that are coming in on an existing time yeah. to do that. And I think you're coming to that meeting. Yeah. Yep. Be there to <laughs> so, I, so I think the pressure is not to, to turn this into a, a revenue neutral thing right away, but rather to make sure that it gets a nice solid footing. And yeah. I would say don't worry about the revenues yet. Yeah. Just get it, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, well you so have to have some boundaries yeah. because, and I think that we yeah. need to set it up such that the pilot, the first time we do it, no expectation of, yeah. of revenue neutralness, but that down the line, I think that there has to be that fee associated with these processes. Is that because people are running little businesses, people are kind of 
do the flea market circuit they're bringing stuff in? No, I think that we're more looking to see that it does, you know, we know that we have a bit of a revenue stream now because of the solid waste energy drops fund, but we don't want to start something up and then have it dependent on a revenue stream that isn't going to be there anymore. And I think there's some uncertainty about what the long-term revenue stream might be mm -hmm. with the solid waste enterprise. So I think that you know, we, if we're committed to recycling and we know there's a fee and we've been telling everyone when the landfill closes, we're, you know, we've got to find a way for this to work without relying on a revenue stream from that. So, Which then brings, are we done with the toy exchange? Okay. Which brings us to the concept of advocacy for the use of the state, the state um, DOD. And DOT, yeah, right, <laughs> DOT site. Um, they're having various conversations about it, and what we know now is that we're all on board. I mean, we think that the BPW and the city is probably on board for the purchasing, and we're sort of heading in that direction. And it feels like that's what our, I think what's, and we know that there'll be some implications for the new facility in terms of this site, in terms of using part of this site, possibly. So. The next step is, is making people sensitive based on the recommendations of the Solid Waste Task Force that this might, that a reuse facility might also be considered for that space. And so what we want to do is write a proposal saying that this is something that's, um, uh, this is a use of the site that we really um, support in response to the task force bring it to the board for discussion. Ultimately, then maybe the board takes it to the joint commission and the joint commission takes it to the city. But the idea is that it's not written in stone, but this is something that's come out of the task force, and but we need to take these baby steps to make sure that we're building support. Jim? Uh, I agree with you 100%, uh, but when the Smith College uh, did the design down there. Uh, didn't they include a reuse uh, area uh, facility? I thought that I was. I think there was a small building for that. Yeah, that was going to be part of it. Good. So the, you know, that was always in the plan, mm -hmm. and and um, certainly it was discussed here. I think it's a home run to to do that. Okay, but I just think that we need to and be cognizant of the politics involved and, and build our foundation very oh, strongly, absolutely. depending on what staff thinks. Well, are you, I mean, my impression is that the reuse section was always part of uh, moving the whole transfer operation down the, down the hill. Well. And are you thinking, let's see if we can, while we wait for the big money necessary to move everything down there, is there a way we can do a small operation? Exactly. I think we are. Just open up and at home. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. On an interim basis, you know, and, and until the, the, the full use of that site is planned and, mm -hmm. and implemented. So there's an existing building down there that might serve as a temporary place for us to be able to get something up and running. And that's the thought behind having these temporary, this, the September activity, the toy exchange, or this new... Uh, what we're thinking will happen at the beginning of June is the swap out. That we have these temporary um, events building um, a foundation for uh, creating um, uh, people that, creating a, uh, a foundation. Yeah, an expectation yeah. that people right. would like to do something mm -hmm. every month or two. And, yeah. and eventually you hope maybe they could be down there. I don't know what shape that building's in. Yeah, it's terrible. It's a, it's a teardown. Yeah. yeah. But could it be the old salt just shed? a shed for a while? Or oh, the old salt shed. Yeah. yeah, it could probably be reused for some kind of reuse facility. Yeah. Just building the right. building the demand. The existing brick building is basically uninhabitable. Right, because no, of dangerous. the wood. That's the that It's wood. not in great shape. Yeah. The foundation has rotted because it's built on wooden timbers that are all wet. Right, they turned off the power, which stopped the sump pumps from the water, so everything from the bottom up is going down. Typical state project. Turn it off and let it rot. Otherwise, it would be a, 
solid building? It needs some work. Yeah, would it be structurally okay if they had left us electricity in? Maybe. I mean, the last time we looked at it was in 04. It's been quite a while. I mean, the, ma the masonry work needs, you know, masonry needs work, roof needs work, heating needs HVAC systems, nothing's up to code, right. foundation, you know, all of that. The recommendation was to demolish the building rather than fix it. So, so Mr. OBR, that sounds great. Yeah. It's really nice you guys are working on that. Um, and then the last thing is, <coughs> An update on the recent storm. So we're done plowing snow. It's all melted. <laughs> it's not all melted. <laughs> we're doing a lot of cleanup work right now. That's what the crews are doing. We've had uh, preliminary discussions with uh, FEMA about a preliminary damage assessment. Our estimate was uh, internal cleanup about fifty thousand dollars for the event, just DPW. I can't speak on behalf of Central Services or Fire Police and so on. So they're trying to see right now if there's enough money in the county and in the statewide to meet the federal thresholds to uh, come up with funding, 75% reimbursements to the community. So the, thing, the preliminary damage assessment team is going around the state right now, telling up all those numbers to see what counties qualify and what, whether the whole state of Massachusetts qualifies. So we're working on that, and we're working on, you can see on the board behind Terry, we're working on the... Uh, Hurricane Irene still, those uh, those worksheets are due um, a week from next Tuesday. So we're looking at uh, reimbursement for those. We believe we're somewhere around $200,000 in damage from that event. And like I said, they do reimburse 75%. And Ned explained to me that... Um as the crews were going around there picking up brush that was out of the curb. Um, Pam, Pam Schwartz is uh, a, an avid emailer, and there's been no hint in anything that she has sent out that I've seen that this sort of thing is going on. It's like a stealth program. It is a stealth program. We see it growing every day as people are cleaning out. We did open up the landfill uh, free of charge, the back gate, for people to bring in their wood waste on Saturdays, uh, we've had a discussion with the mayor-elect about opening it on a Sunday also. Uh, that way more people do it and talking about um, trying to come up with uh, community or, or street cleanups with the residents because not everyone has a pickup truck to haul the wa waste up there. So they're trying to do an outreach program out of the mayor's office for people with vehicles to help elderly people and, and their local neighborhood to get the wood waste up there. But we did waive all the fees for it, and you don't need it. You do not require a vehicle permit pass to bring up that wood waste to the landfill. Uh, crews are out. Uh, we're working uh, almost 12-hour days every day right now, trying to get ahead of the cleanup. Uh, we still probably have two or three weeks left to do, to do the citywide. Is there any way to, um, on the blog or through the city councilors, let people know when um, their neighborhood might be? Visited? The issue is neighborhood. It moves. No, we're, we're not really looking for customers. But I'm not looking for customers. I mean, the, the citizens need to take care of their private trees, and we're taking care of the public shade trees. But we know is that people brush piles are growing every day as people are cleaning up, and they're leaving at the curbside on public property. So as we go through a street, we're not going back again. We made that statement pretty clear across the board, and through the mayor's press release also. And we don't even know if it's going to be a reimbursable event, especially the cleanup. Right. Well, I think there's going to be frustration that some people are assuming that their private waste will be picked up and so they're dragging it to the street, actually putting it in the street. And others are listening and saying, no, it, it's my waste, I have to deal with it myself. And so we certainly don't have a clear message out there. And you know, I think it's going to be a cause for a lot of frustration. And especially if, if we don't go back, and I understand why we might not return to a street, but if, if you see your neighbor's waste removed, yeah. oh, wait a minute, I've got to get mine out there, and, and, and they don't come back. I, 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 I don't think there's been a very clear message, except the one that says if it's public debris, the city will take care of it. If it's private, it's up to you to take care of it as the property. I wonder if the city council would have any appetite for 
there's any kind of a special appropriation. I mean, it just seems like you know, there's a manpower issue, but it seems like this is something the city could be really helpful with. The city could be helpful. The issue is, is that DPW is trying to do it as cheap as we can because it is our responsibility at the moment while I know that other communities are looking to hire contractors to come in. Uh, I had a conversation with Gazette earlier today where they were questioning my fifty, sixty thousand dollars cleanup numbers to Amherst and East Hampton who have hundreds of thousands of dollars in cleanup costs because they're hiring contractors to do the work. They have to pay wage rates to these contractors. It's a huge manpower issue. I mean, if you look at the number of trees done and the, and the limited number of people that we have to actually do the work. I don't know. I don't know. I'm yeah, just looking at the public shade tree things that the crews need to take care of, and I wonder how long it's going to take just to take care of those. Never mind. I mean, if you had to take care of the whole city, that would be a task of, of you know, significant right. proportions. We've asked, we've asked MEMA for chippers for equipment. They don't have any. They could lend, loan us a crew to clear trees, but they still have to move it off the roadway. Uh, we only have two chippers in, at the DPW, so we have four crews out every day with three-man crews, and <clears throat> two of them are just putting it in the back of the truck and moving it to the landfill, and the other two crews are chipping as they go. And then um, DP has given us uh, 90 days to deal with process all the wood waste up at the landfill. So it's not, it's not purely a financial issue. I mean, going to the mayor or the city council and looking for ways to create a funding mechanism for a special event. I mean, it can be done. Um, <clears throat> it's a matter of I'm not sure what it would cost. We don't have any contracts out there. And if we did issue a contract, how fast would it get done before snow flies? We only have a few weeks left now before that starts happening. I'm sure, I mean, Connecticut's in worse shape than we are up here. I'm sure the crews are out straight everywhere right now, clean up crews. But it's interesting that as we're going, as the state's going through with MEMA and FEMA and the dollar value that they're seeing to justify whether or not there's a federal emergency area declaration and then reimbursement of 75%. Mm -hmm. So actually to contract out makes it easier to achieve that number. Is that true? It probably is. Unless they say no and you're stuck with the bill at the end. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And that's what we don't know. Yeah. Usually <clears throat> the language I've seen in past FEMA documents is usually the, the critical things, the first 70 hours after this, the event, which doesn't go far, a few days at best. And this is going to be weeks out of work to be done. So I don't know how FEMA is going to even tackle this one at this point. And how about um, at least uh, letting people know when, uh, I, I suppose the crews are hopping around the hot spots still perhaps, or are they um, methodical now just going up and down the street? One crew that has the tree truck itself are doing hangers and public trees on buildings. That's a white truck. Yeah. So they have a dedicated, you're going around and doing that, and they're just about caught up with pulling the branches and trees off of houses that exist right now. Um, and then there's the truck that will do all the hangers because it's the only bucket truck we have. So is there a way to, at least so someone could be told to go to the blog to see? We are posting everything on the blog, and we're doing a press release. Uh, I just approved one yesterday for Karen to send out. We've put <coughs> over our what we call our snow line, which goes to all the media, um, goes to police, fire, school. I mean, it, I think there's 23 organizations it goes to. So we are trying to get the word out there. And uh, I would imagine that my conversation with Gazette, there'll probably be a fairly sizable article tomorrow on this in the Gazette for all the surrounding communities, not just Northampton. I guess it's not clear to me what the word is we're trying to get out. Because we're, it, by announcing that that we're hitting a certain street at a particular time, it seems like we're inviting people to move their waste to the curb. And and yet we're saying we don't have the resources to do that across the whole city. So I'm... Um, well, at least we've, we're tackling the city, uh, the trees and the uh, tree belt. Right. And I, I recognize the need to do that, but 
I'm not, I'm not sure what the me what, what our message is. The okay, message should be expanded, is what you're well, saying. Or, or not. Or no here's, message. Here's what I'm hearing. I'm sort of puzzled. We're, in a way, we're losing a great marketing opportunity because we have the stealth aspect where you're doing good and a lower cost compared to other communities because you're using our, your, your staff to carry this out. But on the other hand, if we market it too much, then we're asking uh, other people to want to participate in it, and that will automatically increase the cost, plus create some feelings on the part of the people that whose neighborhood they've already been through. So we didn't have an opportunity to put our stuff out because, or either because we had somebody private do it or we kept it in our backyard. So I'm, I'm sort of inclined to just sit back and let staff take care of it and figure out the best way to do it, and and not have the market. Did I summarize that issue? We did. Is the statement out there saying that the city will only do city tree? That was in the, back then, the acting mayor's press release. Okay. That was part of that and it's part of our blog. Well, so it was out there that that's, I think that's, what, it that, that's what it should be. Yeah. That's our yeah. obligation. Yeah. That's I mean, and we're getting hundreds, at least the first few days, we got hundreds and hundreds of phone calls. I mean, all the phones were ringing all day mm -hmm. long asking, you know, if we were going to pick up private trees and backyard, you know, we, and we tell them not to bring it out to the front and clean up the front. Yeah, we have to be consistent. I mean, I mean that whole message has been consistent. So my, guy, my guy came in and cleaned up my backyard, and then he took all of my limbs and brought them out, and they're on my side of the city sidewalk because he's coming by with a chipper and chip them. They're not on the city property. They're still on my property. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think many people might be doing that, but uh, there's no invitation for the city to go by and chip it. In fact, if the city came by and started to chip mine, I'd be mad because it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Still cleaning stuff off, I mean, some of the streets. Yeah. That should be our top priority. That should be our priority. Yeah. Of course, knows. <laughs> exactly. In fact, we, we were scheduled to do street painting this week, centerline painting, and <laughs> it's just not going to get done this year. Yeah. Right. We had another tree come down today, too, we did. didn't we? Yeah, I'm trying to remember which street it was. Oh, really? They're all weak, you know. Yeah. I can't believe that one that came down on Route 10 after the storm. The next day it came down and blocked Route 10. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that no, what you're No, no, it was down Saturday night. I went around it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you remember? Stay off the road that night. <laughs> what? Weren't we being told to stay off the roads that night? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was already out. <laughs> Well, you know, overall, the DPW did a, a really great job between the snow removal. About 10 o'clock at night, we had to pull all the crews off of plowing because mm -hmm. of all the electrical hazards. Mm -hmm. And they went back out shortly after midnight or so, uh, after the city went down completely with power. And they finished the plow routes, and then we started cleanup work the next day. Mm -hmm. So we've been at it for a week. Um, the water treatment plant uh, ran without a hitch. Uh, the guys manned that around the clock. Uh, ran on backup power, same with wastewater treatment plant, ran on backup power with staff being there, you know, even the corrosion control facility. So I thought staff did a bang up job. We had some signal damage, uh, Bedford Terrace signal, uh, and in Cooper's Corner, both those signals are gone. It's probably about $8,000 worth of work. That's part of what's in back of Terry for hopefully a reimbursement from FEMA. Took surges during the power outage and cooked the controllers. I saved the DP from having a couple hundred dollars because I got out to thank a, a guy in a DPW truck for doing such a good job and working hard and asked me how he was doing. This is on um, uh, Ravel. And so then I was parking the car, and then he comes out, and he has his big limb sticking out. And it, it, it's like, I said, stop, stop. And so I just talked to him, and he would have ripped out somebody's electricity. And the electricity was already up and going on that street at that time. That would have been <laughs> <annoying>. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
pushed them over the edge. It could have been electrifying. I too. Yeah. But it was, anyway. Well, I think the staff has done a phenomenal job. I have too, that's why I just stopped and thank them. That is the toughest kind of work when you're out there and you don't know whether you get into a, a tree or whatever, whether there's a electric ball. I wanted to talk about the storm damage. Uh, I was uh, blocked in to my street for, uh, I don't know, 24 hours, I guess. And it really wasn't, but we didn't know that for sure. So physically, we were blocked in at one end. There was a 24 inch oak that came down, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, you really bent power poles over and so forth. And at the other end, it was, I think it was just street light wires that came down, and people were freaking out. And the fire department, somebody put up yellow tape. And so it got really quiet on my street. <laughs> and uh, as I was out there picking up debris in the street, because I didn't take long to clean up the yard, there wasn't much, and I just, the neighbors were walking by and we were talking. I, I just, it was a great time. I started thinking about volunteerism and whether or not, you know, there was a way to deputize people who wanted to just run branch loppers mm -hmm. and, and, you know, issues of liability are going around in my head, and how do, how do we really know that they're not going to do something stupid and kill themselves? And, and you don't know that, but you know, if if we could, if if the message were clear about whose trees are whose and who has what responsibility, and we could get people to start to pile up um, some of the debris that I guess would be a technically city responsibility, I, wouldn't that be a good thing? I don't know. I think some people would really like that. On the other hand, I did hear somewhere in Connecticut that. Some municipalities' uh, union crew stopped volunteers from doing work because they felt they were encroaching on their, <laughs> on their work. So, I mean, all, all of that stuff, I think, needs to be done properly if someone were to do that. And I, I, would, I have no idea how to do it. But I, I got a lot of pleasure out of helping clean out the street. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, I knew there was no risk. There were no wires, and there was absolutely no traffic. So it was easy to find those. And in your case, you know what's going on and you know what to look for. Yeah, I do. And, That's and, a difference. and again, there was no traffic. So I mean, yeah. if there's a limb out in the uh, street and you're dodging cars, uh, <laughs> maybe that wouldn't be such a great volunteer opportunity. <laughs> but it still just seemed like I enjoyed it. Uh, it's all, is the electricity hours. all turned off in an area if they suspect that there's wires <coughs> down? I mean, I just couldn't believe no. that we didn't have more electrical events. Well, the grid is very complicated. Depends on the blow on the way. These people talked about the blue lightning they saw. Yeah. Oh, what's the <laughs> transformers? Just, well, it wasn't trans those were breakers. I think it's just breakers. When yeah. they pop open, it was a flash. Uh, yeah. For real. I think we're sure the world is coming to an end. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they predicted thunder and lightning for that night. Cause it Get any promises out of them? I think there was some lightning. No, there was. 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 But there was a lot of blue flashes. I think you had a lot of those uh, circuits popping. Yeah. You know, and, and and I, I can remember stop. when when I was working full time and I'd get a call, uh, there's power outage at one of the pumping stations, and I'd go down and and I trace the line back and with the big light and check the, where to see where the fuse was blown, mm -hmm. and then call it into the company, tell them, hey, this fuse is at such and such a place. Yeah. Because it would save me a couple of hours if I told them exactly where it was. Right. Yeah. Even, even that, I think that, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, people, allow people to do what they're capable of doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's a, that's a tough call. I know, I know. That, that somebody's going to say, I'm capable of doing this, and they're going to say, you know, he gets killed. Right. All right. Jim, anything no. you didn't cover? I would have to say this was an extremely well-run meeting, but you didn't break the record. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we were chatting here at the end. Yes. Ned, it, it, I'm all set. Thank you. All set, Jim. Okay. Good question about the uh, woman on Liberty Street and the plowing. Were there was there anything that we had talked about 
the woman who was in talking about the. Uh, yes, um, I'm trying to remember her name. Oh, oh um, the woman we did. Yeah, when snow jumped in the driveway. Sharon Sandy. 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 Yeah. Sandy yeah. Mandel. Yeah. Absolutely. Unfortunately. Correct. I haven't heard anything. Um, I, I just want to share that I went and I shoveled out the end of her driveway and did. There's another driveway right across the street from mine, the Olshansky Garlock driveway, that has that same sort of serve on a corner and gets. And the, the problem was that there were lots of leaves mixed in with the snow, but it wasn't unlike. You shoveled the end of her driveway? Yeah. I'm at 20 One voter at a time. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to see if it was substantially different from other driveways. And was she around? Was she I, I, no. Well, there was a car in the driveway, but I don't know. But it was. It's not like it's not unlike other driveways in the neighborhood. I'm sorry yeah. to report that there's nothing particularly unique. Uh -huh. That's and, interesting. And I think well, my driveway's more unique. She was <laughs> impressed that people had gone to look at the driveway. David, you went, Jim, yeah. you went, I think. But if she had seen you out there shoveling the driveway. I only shoveled like the first three feet well, at know, the end. Well, next time it's your turn. <laughs> 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 and the leaves were That's terrible. Our solution. I mean, there, there were leaves mixed in with the snow, yeah. and it was yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, wow. but I just want... It, it, it's not... Um, it's not a unique driveway. Did, did you shovel the Oshansky Garlic driveway? I did, because Dan has this, a bad back, and yeah. he helps us out. But yeah. he didn't have a snowblower out, right. and he had this big pile of pumpy snow. Yeah. So yeah. I just did the end of his yeah. job. Oh, that's nice. Well, so well, no, you had to be, say warm somehow. I like to figure that the, the best part of the <coughs> shoveling job is the end of the driveway. It's kind of like eating the crust on apple pie. <laughs> 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 Ooh, I agree. It's very satisfying. The two of you can cut the crust. Well, that's actually right. <laughs> and often it is very crusty because the pile yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what Sandy said. Yeah, yeah. And it lasts longer, too. Oh. All right. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> hey, Terry? Yes. I miss Mimi tonight. Uh, she yeah. must be pooped after, I mean... She yes, we're giving her a day, day off. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, she'll be back. <laughs> 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 You'll be enough to, to Terry, you have no? to sign this before you go. No, Thanks. no well... <laughs> that easement. So why are you here in charity? I'm giving her a day off. <laughs> what a nice guy. <laughs>